Intel's latest Alder Lake processors have two types of CPU cores, E-cores and P-cores. But why would a single CPU have two types of cores? The CPU cores in your computer have evolved at a consistent rate over the years. We started with single-core CPUs, but that quickly evolved into multi-threading, and from there, multi-core configurations, beginning with dual-core designs and progressing to quad-core, octa-core, and beyond. Intel's 12th generation CPU surprised us with an unexpected but welcome twist. Two types of cores in one CPU package, E-cores and P-cores. But what exactly are the Intel E-core and the P-core? And maybe more significantly, why should you care? Until now, x86 computers have used core architectures made up of cores that are nearly identical to one another. Regardless of the silicon lottery, each core has the same processing capacity and clock speed. It's a design that makes sense because the goal of multi-core architectures is to distribute tasks across all cores in order to crunch through things faster. On the RM side, though, they decided to shake things up a little with what is known as a big little architecture. Essentially, you now have two sets of cores performing distinct functions. The bigger performance-oriented cores tackle the more demanding activities, while the smaller efficiency-oriented cores undertake background tasks while consuming far less energy. The combination allows ARM to improve chip performance while remaining power efficient. This is precisely what Intel is doing. You have two groups of cores that are doing separate tasks. The company experimented with this structure initially with its mobile Lakefield processors, the Intel Core i5-L16G7 and the Core i3-L13G4. These processors had one P-Core and four E-Cores. While the first iteration was a mixed bag in terms of performance, the company did it again with its flagship series of chips, Alder Lake, which received much acclaim. What exactly is an Intel P-Core? Let's start by defining what a P-Core is. P-Cores are the most powerful cores on Intel's two distinct core layouts. These are the ones that will consume the most energy, run at the highest clock speeds, and crush through instructions and tasks in general. These are the main cores in the chip that do most of the heavy lifting. P-Cores on Intel's 12th generation CPUs are based on Intel's Golden Cove microarchitecture, which replaces the earlier Cypress Cove cores seen in Rocket Lake, 11th Gen chips. Heavy tasks, such as gaming or heavy processing loads, will often be handled by P-Cores, as would other workloads that benefit from single-core performance in general. When Intel chip cores were all identical, all the PC's instructions were dispersed evenly among all cores. Furthermore, P-Cores support hyperthreading, which means that each core will have two processing threads for better load handling. What exactly is an Intel E-Core? E-Cores are smaller and weaker than P-Cores, but they also consume less power. Indeed, their whole emphasis is on power efficiency and providing the best performance per watt. So, what exactly does an E-Core do? In conjunction with the P-Core setup, it handles multi-core workloads and other types of background tasks, while leaving P-Cores generally free for heavy workloads. E-Cores on Intel's 12th generation CPUs are based on Intel's Gracemont microarchitecture. It is the successor of Tremont, which is used in select Pentium Gold and Seller and Laptop processors. I hope you can see where they're coming from. They're mostly low-power cores with low clock speeds, as low as 700 MHz in some mobile chips. Despite the fact that they are low-power cores, Intel loves to brag about their performance when compared to earlier generations of cores. How well do P-Cores and E-Cores complement each other? In a nutshell, pretty well. According to Intel, the P-Cores and 12th Gen chips outperform the cores in Intel's 11th Gen chips by 19%. Furthermore, the E-Cores are no slouch. They outperform Skylake CPUs by 40% while using the same amount of power. The Skylake architecture was introduced in 2015, yet it's still commonly utilized in some older gaming machines today which isn't terrible for cores that are supposed to be low power. So, are hybrid CPU layouts the way of the future? While the concept of P-Cores and E-Cores is not new in the tech world, it is new to the x86 architecture, 
and Intel is finding incredible results with it. Core counts on its chips have increased, as has performance. They're one of the most important developments in PCs in years, even in their initial iteration, and we can't wait to see how they improve in the future.